Now I'm going to show you a second way to set up a main mix based mix for your uh, tracking performers in their headphones. Currently we're using the pre-fader configuration on the Studio Sense. So these are independent now. The levels are independent of the fader settings of their respective channels. And again, also the pan settings are independent of the fader settings of the respective channels. Even though they match right now, some of them match, like this negative 2.15 dB max matches this one, it can be changed and it really has nothing to do with whatever level is set here on the channel. But we can use it in a different configuration, the post fader configuration. And in that configuration, you're actually able to follow any automation that happens on these faders. So in order to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is I've got my, my channel selected that I want to manipulate my Studio Sends on. I right click on my Studio One, Studio One, and I reset Studio Sends. Resetting Studio Sends does four things. First of all, it changes all Studio Sends to a post fader configuration. Second, it changes all their levels to negative 6.02 dB. Why the 02 on that negative 6.02? Well, my understanding is there's some sort of mathematical reason for it, but I'm not sure what it is. The third thing it does is turns all the pan settings to center. And finally, the last thing it does is it turns all the selected studio sends off. So resetting studio sends also turns them off. That's something to be aware of. So once I do that, all the studio sends are now off for those, for those selected channels. And if I then enable them again, enable studio sends, you'll see that they've all been set to post fader. They're all set to negative 6.02 dB and they're all at center pan positions. Now, what it means to be post fader is it now is following these fader levels and these pan levels. So, this level here, this negative 6 dB, is relative to this fader level. So say this fader level is at 0 dB, the actual output of this studio send is going to be 6 dB lower than that. And same with, with, with any other uh, fader level here. This is going to be 6 dB lower than negative 6.31. It's going to be negative 12.31, or negative 12.33 actually. So the reason Steinberg has done that is made these these default levels negative 6 dB is to give you enough headroom to create a more me mix or whatever mix you whatever specialized mix you want for your tracking performer without butting up against the 0 dB mark which you might be doing if you just followed the main mix it depends on how you've mixed it but if you've mixed it so that you're right up against the 0 dB level you need some headroom in order to create a more me mix for a piano player for example so that's why they've set these default levels at negative 6 dB. So right now, just by doing that one thing, resetting the studio sends and then enabling them again, I now have the basis of a main mix all over again. So if I play it, the piano player will hear what I hear in the main mix. I can also customize it, of course, just like I did before. I can turn off the sound effects. I can turn off the musical sound effects. I can turn up his piano. thusly, and then I can turn down the drums, for example, and now I've got a customized mix for my piano player that doesn't include any sound effects, and, but I can still go to the main mix as the control room channel operator here and listen to the, all the sound effects, the car horns, all that stuff that my piano player may not be interested in hearing in his earphones, and you can do that up to four different times for four different studio channels and completely independent mixes in that way. Now, in the next video, I'll discuss a, just one more trick about manipulating all these studio sends that you've got selected in one foul swoop. And we'll cover that in the next video.